Have you ever seen an ad on Instagram, clicked on it, followed the person? Because I've never done that. Yeah, no, that's... That, that's, have, what, that's what I'm saying. I've like, never seen anyone do that. So that's what I'm saying. That's, that's why it's what, not going to work. But, that's what, but how? Just because no I just one tell has you. done anything doesn't mean it's not work. There's no celebrities being made from shorts. Nobody remembers who they are. It's a funny video I saw for five seconds and I went to the next video. On TikTok, do you ever say, I like TikTok because of so-and-so creator? No, no, People no. are just like, I like TikTok. They don't say because of this creator because nobody remembers the creators because the creators don't matter. Well, I have a McLaren 570S and they come up and ask me like, oh, how do you achieve this? They think I'm just going to give them like some magic beans <laughs> and they're going to like throw them out their window's gonna have a magic bean stop and they're gonna find the goose that lays the golden eggs like <laughs> dude all right cool what's up yeah hey finally doing the podcast that we said we were gonna do four years ago <laughs> exactly exactly it was a work in progress but we got it done yeah. you know rome wasn't built in a day we've slowly been working our way up to complete a podcast and we're here now that's what it's about it's about the journey tell me a little bit about the journey i heard that you dropped a post on instagram that is sparking up some controversy i made a post about two days ago about photography on instagram i made some key points on that post if you're a photographer, I feel like you need to work on your craft. You can't just start at the top. Maybe I hit a chord with some people because they found that offensive. And I had thousands of photographers sharing the post. And a lot of these photographers reached out to me and they were telling me like, you're confusing being a photographer with being an influencer. You know me, like I did photography for a while. Photographers are influencers. <laughs> Like, if you're a photographer on the internet, you're an influencer. You might not be influencing anyone yet. That's your goal. Your goal is to become an influencer because that's where your customers are coming from. Like, if you're an internet photographer, how are you going to get customers if you're not promoting your stuff on the internet? As a photographer, it's more important to have high engagement and a big following than the quality of the work. Your work is already speaking for itself. Like, you're not going to have a huge following if your work sucks. You know, I think it's just about uh, different perspectives and for, for your perspective and what you need for your business, you see photography through a different lens as opposed to maybe photographers um, who are trying to start a business and maybe they're not really worried about vanity metrics. Maybe they're not using social media to get their business out there. They're using other methods. But I feel like if I'm the target audience, most of the photographers want to photograph people with like the exotic cars and I'm one of your customers and I'm telling you what the customers want and I'm telling you what all my friends have expressed and want i think it's silly for you to reject that when we're telling you what we want like we want engagement we want good photos but we also want the engagement because the problem i have is that when that photographer that has 100 followers posts the photo of the car it's only going out to his 100 followers and maybe a few random people that engage with his posts versus the person who's already established who has hundreds of thousands or millions of followers where when they post it goes out and 20,000 people like it and share it and they come back to my profile and now I have 8,000, 9,000 new followers. Like the value proposition for me is in getting the engagement in the followers. It's not in the post. Anyone can grab their camera, their phone and snap a photo of their car. Like there's no value in that. And plus photography's dead. I, I tried to tell them that. And when you tell them that they get really offended, but it's the truth. Like Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, all of the platforms are pushing video. I don't understand why you would go against the trend when the trend is video. It's not photography. I don't think it's dead. I think it's evolving. And I think it's evolving into videography. And then it's, we're going to spin the block. It's going to, photography is going to come right back. What you should take from this post is that everyone has a different value proposition, right? This is really important to make sure that you do uh, segment your audience and you know who your ideal client avatar is and what's important to them because uh, what is important to someone that is trying to do a wedding shoot and someone who's trying to do a car shoot is a lot different. If you're the guy who's getting upset, there's a reason why you only have 200 or 1,000 followers. You're not inside of that trend. Like the trend is like a river and you are sitting on the outskirts. Like you're trying to do your own thing and like sometimes your own thing isn't what's going to work. A lot of the times artists get like pigeonholed into like an idea of what their art is and they don't look at it from like a business perspective. They're looking at it as an artist. And as an artist, sure, you could have amazing work and that's great. More power to you for having amazing work. You know, anytime something ruffles someone's feathers, to me, that's like a, a warning sign that they need to dig a little bit deeper and figure out why. Remember that they're not looking at it from a business perspective. They're looking at it, at it from an artist perspective. So when they hear you tell them like, the quality of your work doesn't matter and mm. nobody cares if you're a good photographer. That kind of language offends them. 
I do use very aggressive language on purpose, but it's kind of just to like shake them awake. Obviously I'm being hyperbolic. Like if your photographs are bad, you're not, it doesn't matter how many times you post them, they're bad, you're not gonna get any traction. What I really was trying to say more than anything else was that you don't have to be the best photographer in the world to get customers. I hear photographers all the time complaining, like, why does this guy get all these customers? What the hell, that's not fair. Do you see his work? That guy that you're complaining about who's getting all the customers and his work isn't that great, it's because he's actually doing what I said in the post. Like, he's tagging people, working his ass off. He's posting every single day, because in the post I also said that he should be posting more than me. I'm the car owner, like, I shouldn't have to do anything. It's your job to have me grow. That's why I'm gonna pay you to do the photography because I'm expecting a return on investment. I'm paying you for the engagement and the followers. If I'm posting once a day, you should be posting twice a day. It's in your best interest, like, come on. And also the fact that a lot of these guys wanna start at the very top. You think that you're just gonna grab a camera one day and like you're gonna walk up to a guy with like a Lamborghini SVJ and you're gonna be like, hey, do you wanna book me? I charge $180 an hour. Like, no, he's not. He's going to look at you like you're crazy and laugh. So it's all about engagement. So at the end of the day, what you were trying to do, you actually accomplished with the post, which was get some engagement. Yeah, no, I like this because a lot of people don't really even engage with things that don't resonate or, or stir up the pot. Uh, but this is how you push society or anything forward is by having these tough conversations. So I love it. I mean, social media is something that's constantly moving. Algorithm is constantly changing. Like, you can't just stick to one pattern. Something that could be trending super heavy in one category and another category it might not be. If you get enough people, like I know a lot of people who have a lot of followers, so they can force it to be the category that we want it to be. Because when they make a video and post it, all of their followers see it. And all of a sudden you got all their followers making car videos and they convert it from fashion or gym or whatever to just car stuff. But that's because you've already made a network with real people. Like, I feel like a lot of people also think that they're just gonna do this purely on social media, which I mean, you can, but it's much harder. Like it's much easier if you know the people in real life. Okay, cool. I, I like that. I like that. So the overall goal is to get followers and to gain some more influence. Yeah. For me, it's easier because the car is like social validation. So it's easier to like go up to another guy who's already like kind of famous and a car influencer and be like, Hey, you want to collaborate or hey, this and that, or talk to them because they see like you have the car, so they're like, oh, this guy must be doing something. I mean, he has the car. But if you were like a fitness influencer, I think it would be a little bit harder because you're a dime a dozen. You're not just going to walk up to Bradley Martin in his gym and be like, hey, you want to collaborate? And be like, who the hell are you? <laughs> like, it's not written in stone and it's changing all the time. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like it's a feeling process for you as well, especially with the, uh, with the algorithm. It seems like they give more sway to the people who have the larger following. Yeah, of course no such thing as an algorithm algorithm is just like the people if a guy has a whole bunch of people behind them an army of people he can basically force the algorithm to do whatever he wants because the algorithm is just looking at what's trending and if you have a million people behind you and you do something all of a sudden there's a million people who like this audio or there's a million people who like this trend right you know people are interested in yeah. this so let's show it to some more people yeah just imagine it in real life like in real life if there was a guy in your town right and that guy opened up a store in the middle of nowhere but he was famous it's gonna become a trending store because he already has all the people so it's the same thing your store is your profile if you're already popping or you know people who are popping then they're gonna pop it up and it will become popular because they're already popular yes 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 all right so tell me a little bit about uh, some of the products and or services that you're pushing nowadays, Scott? My main, main focus has been a clothing brand that I started, Car Buddha Threads. So if you go to my Instagram, it's car underscore Buddha, or the website is carbuddha.com. That's B-U-D-D-H-A. I have a bunch of designs, all car related. I'm really focusing on the car niche. I feel like it's untapped territory. With the shirts, it's the same thing as the social media posts. Like I go into like Etsy and I look at the shirts that are trending and the phrases they have and I see which ones can be applied in my genre of cars. And then I just like copy the text, change it a little bit and change the image. Because if those are already trending in that niche, then there's a high chance that they'll trend in the car niche. You can come up with your own ideas from scratch and maybe some of them might pop off it's harder you're trying to reinvent the wheel like i agree i agree it's, it's easier to buy a business that's already doing what you want to do as opposed to just starting it all over again from scratch and my dms on instagram i get a lot of young people messaging me like asking me for like opinions and advice and stuff and i feel like a lot of people are trying to find like the the shortcut or easy way to get to that goal but in reality there's like no easy way like it's just work you just gotta work your ass off and be alert and stay alert and 
pay attention to the trends and pay attention to like what other people are doing. For those of you who don't know, I have a McLaren 570S and they come up and ask me like, oh, how do you achieve this? Sometimes I even give them the steps like, hey, I did this, I did this, I did this. And when you can see their eyes get glassy, they think I'm just gonna give them like some magic beans <laughs> and they're gonna like throw them out their window, it's gonna have a magic bean stop and they're gonna find the goose that lays the golden eggs. Like, <laughs> dude. And a lot of people see like the end result, like they see the McLaren and you know they don't see the journey it took to actually get there and like i've been with this guy since almost day one so i've yeah. actually seen the journey it's a lot of work that goes into it it's not easy and there's no shortcuts there's no elevator to success you got to take the stairs you have to have some discipline a lot of people would just they'd give up really quickly like a lot of people think that i'm like a giant car guy but it's not that i'm a giant car guy it's that that's the niche that for me to become a youtuber a vlogger seem to be the most accessible niche and it's gonna sound crazy but the reason why is because it has a very high barrier of entry there's two types of car youtubers spotters which are just like normal kids that go to shows and they record the cars and then there's the owners to become a successful spotter youtube channel it's much harder than a successful owner because when you're the owner you already have the car and to get the car it's like a two hundred thousand dollar car so not any random person can do that whereas if you're a gym influencer or you're doing the pop the balloon challenge or you're just a random city walking around vlogger any person can just grab a camera and do that the barrier to entry is much lower so there's going to be more competition as a car youtuber who's also a car owner who also has a supercar in my list of people that i know i know tons of like actual like celebrity car youtubers like if you go to my channel like i have shmi 150 like i spent the entire day hanging out with shmi 150 like who the hell hangs out with shmi 150 that's a normal person if they don't have an exotic car already dde and i love dde i love their channel but i have to be honest when DD is in a place and people walk up to him and they're like, oh, they want to talk and that kind of stuff. You can see that they do they do engage the people, but they're, they're just like, hey, nice to meet you. They take their little photo. They'll say like two or three words and they'll go to the next person. Whereas when I pull up with the McLaren and park right behind him and I get out of the McLaren, like I could have spent the entire day hanging out with them. Like they weren't in a rush to be like, okay, next person. Right. Because they're just, you already validated that you're in their same category. And I have to be honest, it's probably also part of the reason why my video got like the 27,000 views and the other videos got less is because of my video. And the other videos, Damon from DDE only talked to the people like 30 seconds or one minute. And in my video, he literally has like seven minutes talking. That's in the advantage of having the car because I already got through the barrier. If I was a fitness vlogger, let's say, it doesn't matter if I was jacked. I can't go to LA, go to like Bradley Martin's gym and then walk up to Bradley Martin and be like, hey, we're gonna we're here with Bradley Martin, da 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 da, and have like a 10 minute conversation with them because there's a thousand other dudes that are jacked anyone a fitness person can just grab a camera go in there and he's gonna be like okay this is another random person and the craziest thing is having the supercar i bet you i could probably go to bradley martin's gym in the supercar park it in front of it hop out and be like hey the and he would still give me more time than the guy who's jacked who comes in there with the camera to talk with them people always are going to go to people who they think they can get something out of like there's an advantage to like when they see the supercar they think well this guy must have money or influence or power or something that he has so there's uh something in it for me whereas if you're just like a random dude who just pulls up with their camera they're gonna be like i got one minute <laughs> I mean, that's just how humans are. I don't yeah. make the rules. That's a lot to unpack. A lot to unpack. All right, cool. So we're in the area of YouTube. And YouTube Shorts is, I feel like it's relatively new. What are your thoughts around YouTube Shorts? I meant to say this earlier. YouTube Shorts, don't do them. If you are trying to make long format content, I would not recommend doing YouTube Shorts on the same channel. I realized that when you post a YouTube Short, at least for me, every single YouTube Short was getting like 10,000 views, 15,000 views, and it was getting like a whole bunch of followers. And those followers, they don't watch my long format videos. And I'd post like a long, form, long format video the next day and I would watch to see like if the engagement was cross pollinating in the analytics and they weren't. Like those guys, if they came from a YouTube short, they're gonna watch shorts. The people who watch shorts, they don't have the attention span to watch a long video. They just don't wanna watch it. Right. It's kind of a waste of time because if you get a video that has 50 million views on YouTube, 50 million views because I saw a guy on YouTube who actually showed his analytics and he explained this 50 million views the video made five hundred thousand dollars 50 million views on youtube shorts it made him five hundred dollars and this it's is not worth this it. is youtube just paying you out based off of their pay structure this is not you plugging in your own products or services yeah okay got you got you now if he plugged in his services because you can once you're a partner you can add your 
services on there. You can even like open a shop directly on there and promote your stuff directly through the the platform. Then he could probably make extra revenue, but just on AdSense alone, then it's not it's not worth it because the AdSense for shorts is like pennies, and the AdSense for long videos is like millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah, shorts is a trick to get the content creators out of the picture. So when people say, I saw this video, it was really interesting, I liked it, they don't even remember the person who made the video. The person is not important anymore. The only thing that's important is the content. Whereas when you make a YouTube channel and a long videos, it's about you. And people actually remember who you are and you become like an actual celebrity. There's no celebrities being made from shorts because nobody remembers who they are. They just remember it was a funny video. I saw five for five seconds and I went to the next video. When you have long format YouTube videos, the people actually have to remember who you are to search you up to find your videos, to subscribe. When you're in shorts, you just open up the app and all of a sudden you're seeing, you're seeing content, you're just scrolling. Like you're not gonna remember who you, why. Who they are, why you like them, you won't remember any of that. So it's kind of a trick. There might be a chance that they're doing it on purpose to get the content creators out of the picture because like, why would we need you to be famous? We want our platform to be famous. We want people to say, I like going to YouTube because YouTube has funny content. Not, I like going to YouTube because PewDiePie has funny content or Mr. Beast has funny content. They wanna get those people out of it because when people talk about TikTok, on TikTok, do you ever say, I like TikTok because of so-and-so creator? <laughs> no, no. People no. are just like, I like TikTok. They don't say because of this creator because nobody remembers the creators because the creators don't matter. <laughs> That's an interesting take. All right, so a lot of these platforms, a lot of people come up organically on them. They also have an advertising element to them as well. So we, we've had this discussion multiple times, the catalyst for this podcast, because we have differing opinions. In my opinion, I think that ads can be used as a tool to sell merchandise but i don't think it's a good it's a good path to go down for content engagement and the reason i don't when someone is thrown in front of the eyes of other people quickly there's always going to be a section of people that are impressionable they're going to subscribe because they saw it and they just they have no self-control they saw it in an ad it caught their attention for a second they subscribed and then those people you'll never see them again. Now, those people you do want for merch because those are the same people who have no willpower. They see a shirt with something on it and they're like, oh, well, I like that, bye. You might never see them again, but who cares because you got their money. But when it has to do with views and engagement, I don't think that's the best strategy. When it comes to views and engagement, I don't think that's the best strategy because you need the people to stick around. When the people come to you organically, they have like a parasocial relationship with you where those same people, they see you in person, they're gonna think you're like friends with them. Like, I mean, I've never seen you in my life, but you think you know me because you've watched my video and like their comments will be like oh why'd you say it to your girlfriend and those people will always stick with you my fear is that it's easier to get followers using ads that those followers they will actually pull you down because when you post the next time and they don't engage instagram or youtube will say like oh well this person doesn't like their content so the content must not be good those people aren't going to engage and they're going to fall off and they're going to be zombie people yeah my whole thing scott i agree with you to a certain extent but also, I feel like nowadays, people don't know the full versatility of advertising. Like, we're just so used to seeing ads all day, every day, from childbirth to adulthood, that we think there's just one form of, of ads, which is like putting up a billboard on a highway. But when it comes to digital ads, it's, you get a lot deeper than just blanket advertising. That's kind of what you may be referring to when I say ads is, is more of the blanket advertising. And when you do blanket advertising, you are not going to reach people who will engage with you because maybe that's not even the niche that they're even interested in. And what I'm talking about when I say ads, I know I say it very loosely and plainly, but I'm talking about actually like targeted ads, like targeting people who are actually interested in you. For instance, I feel like a really good strategy for people is to come up organically on platforms like YouTube and Instagram, and then they can actually make lookalike audiences of their organic audiences and run ads to get people that are more niche down, that are more likely to engage with your content because you know those are already the same type of people that follow you. Have you ever seen an ad on Instagram for content? Not a product, content seen it, clicked on it, followed the person, and then continued to engage the person. 
Because I've never done that. For content. Yeah, no, that's... That, that's, have, what, so that's what I'm saying. I've like, never seen anyone do that. So that's what I'm saying. That's, that's why, why it's not going to work. But, that's what, but how? Just because no I just one told you done anything doesn't mean it's not going to work. That's I just, just like you. we were just talking about the balloon pop thing. Like, if we were just talking about it beforehand and someone told the guy, well, have you ever seen anyone pop balloons on camera before like that? Of course, everybody's going to be like, no, that's not going to work. But to me, I look at it the opposite. I'm like, oh, wow. I look at it as like, that could work but, because nobody is even doing it. <laughs> but that's not a good example either because the analogy is a little bit wrong. It would be, I'll give you the example. It would be as if somebody was already making the balloon pop videos for years and years and years. And you go to their channel and you see like two views, five views, six views, five views. And then that person is telling other people like, hey, you should do this, this thing because I've been doing it and it works. But then we go and we look and we're like, well, dude, like I'm looking at your channel and you've been doing these videos for the balloon pops for like three years and you have no nothing. Nothing's happening. Like <laughs> what's happening? So that's how I see it. Like, it's not that I'm saying that it, it's not like I'm throwing it out of air. Like I already saw other people do it and I see like the results that they have from it. And like, also you can tell how is it possible that you have 200,000 followers and nobody knows who you are. Nobody comes up to you and says like, oh, nice. Hey, I, I just saw your video. I really like it. Like great content. Keep it up. And a guy like me goes to a car show and like, I literally get like a hundred people coming up to me and being like, Hey, I watched the last video. Great video. That in itself just shows me like your followers are not real followers. Like they're impulse people. Everybody knows this about ads. Like that's why when they run commercials, they say we want to get the impulse buyers because the people who fall for ads are impulse buyers. Like I in my entire life have never watched an ad and said, you know what? I'm going to do that thing that's in the ad. Like those are the impulse buyers that do that. But I don't want those people. Like I want the people who like sat down rationally on my content and they watched like a video and they're like, oh, this is kind of interesting. Let me watch another one. And they watched another one like, oh, okay, I like this guy. And they subscribed. That's the guy I want. I don't want the guy who saw like, oh, flashy colors, Scott Leonard, da, 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 da. And they're like, oh, I like cars. This guy's a car guy. Subscribe. And then. I think we're both right. And I think that what you're saying, it's not just applies to ads it applies to the organic side of things too it's it just does that that's what i was telling you you don't really you don't see it like that because you're going for the long guy you're not going for the impulse person but you may get those impulse people and their behaviors may be the same you, well, you might notice organically that the impulse people are also the same people don't that don't really engage well, well yeah yeah the, the way you want them the to. organic so when you do the organic approach 20 percent of those hundred people are the spontaneous impulse person people get a certain amount of numbers and you get a certain amount of views and out of those views some of them will be impulse people some people will not watch the whole video at all they'll watch like the first two minutes of the video and they'll subscribe that person who just watched two minutes of a 10 minute video and subscribed that person's going to be a trash person whereas when you're doing the ad you're kind of focusing on impulse people i want to myth bust this and actually <laughs> test it out because i i, I also want to create a youtube I, channel myself so this is a perfect i told you to, to do that <laughs> to to start it so that I can show Scott what I'm talking about. We, we got to base it on facts. Because I've ran ads for thousands of businesses. And although on my specific business profile or Instagram profile is different because I don't run ads through my own specific Instagram profile. But I have other businesses. But I think the people that you ran ads for, the other businesses, they're selling something. They're selling a product or something. They're yeah, not they, just trying to get views. Yeah, they're selling a product or something. But through the funnel, I'm able to put certain links in there that increase their followers so it's not like it's up front like the ad is like hey come follow me no the first ad will be about maybe their business but then within that funnel in the nurturing sequence i will ask them for a follow and i well, usually get the follow i think you might be missing my point my point is i don't want them so like the guys that you're selling the products for their main goal isn't they're not trying to be like um a YouTuber influencer. They're just trying to sell something. Like if my YouTube channel was selling this book, then I would run a shit ton of ads because like, I don't care about like the engagement. I don't care about the people coming back. I don't care about people coming up and like knowing me in real life. I don't care about any of that. I'm just trying to sell like a product. I think that's the strong suit for ads is when you're trying to sell a product. But if you're trying to be like an actual person, like who has real power in real life, like, okay, you went to the car show I ran. Mm -hmm. Like you saw how many people were there and how many people, Kane and left 
like if I had just been like running ads and just getting people, even if they were in my local area, those people will have like no emotional connection. So they won't even listen to me if I'm like, hey, let's meet up here. They'll be like, the fuck am I meeting up with this guy for? <laughs> yeah, that's if your ad is just plain and generic. But if your ad is engaging and um, you nurture your audience and it's not when I say ads, it's not just one ad. It's I, a I, multiple ads. But I, let's do this. Let's do yeah, the yeah. fact. I think this is a great opportunity to test the theory out let, let me tell you the first of the rules though <laughs> the rules are i want you to do three months running ads and build up your following right build up your following three months ads with the content build up your following at the end of the three months stop the ads boom cut them off and then we're going to do three months of organic posts on the same account that you did the three months uh, of the ads and then we're going to compare the, the analytics and the engagement. And I guarantee you, when you stop the ads and you turn off the faucet of followers and engagement, you post, those posts are going to be ghost land. We can see, I might be completely wrong, but I'm going to, I am willing to bet that that's what's going to happen. All right, cool. So we here with Scott Leonard. Thank you so much for joining us at the S Social Sales Lab office. It was a fun time, man. We finally got it done. It's only going to get better from here. Everyone needs to hear this conversation. Help our civilization as a whole reach a whole nother level of consciousness and well-being. That's what it's about. Okay, <laughs> cool. Thanks, man. Peace.